My name is Paul Harderson with Sea Dog Travels, and welcome to our monthly cruise and travel webinar. Uh, this month, we are excited to uh, have Award Reed uh, from uh, Windstar Cruises join us. And Windstar, you know, Award, as you know, they advertise themselves as 180 degrees from ordinary. They really kind of set their name doing the South Pacific and Tahiti, and have really expanded globally. And uh, they really have been a mainstay in the luxury cruise industry for quite a while now and uh, really like to welcome you to be here and to share with us all about Windstar. Well, thank you very much, Paul. Yeah, that was a great introduction. That was uh, spot on. You've absolutely nailed us. 35 years we've actually been into uh, Tahiti uh, as we speak this year, so that's a big celebration for us. Um, and then, of course, yeah, leverage now uh, with uh, global destinations as we go around. So let me just jump straight into um, our fleet here, because that's the important thing to understand. As you said, we're only a small fleet. We have three sailing boats, which you see on the left there. Um, and they hold between, we've got two that hold 150. So they're our little babies, if you like. Think the warm waters, Caribbean, um, Mediterranean. And then we do have the largest sailing boat in the world, which I've put there, the Windsurf. Uh, she's an iconic ship been around for years and spends her times in the Mediterranean. That goes up to 348, let's call it 350. Then the boat in the foreground are our new star class motor yachts. So traveling in private yacht style, these only take up to 312 guests. And um, we've got three of those. And uh, I'll speak more about those as we move through. There's that iconic vessel I mentioned, 348. This has a 100% satisfaction rate. I just love putting these uh, people on this boat. Uh, people just come back raving and raving, um, and we, we keep her in the Mediterranean at the moment. Uh, the two smaller boats, the Windstar spends her time in the Caribbean, and the Wind Spirit is that boat uh, previously mentioned in Tahiti for 35 years. But we have some big news. As of January, we will be putting one of the uh, new star class uh, private motor yachts down there just for capacity reasons. We have a huge demand uh, and we want to service that business. So uh, the Star Breeze there in the foreground will be relocating down there. We've got the legend in the background and of course the pride. Now just to give you a little bit of um, nuts and bolts if you like, this is real nuts and bolts. Here we are in 2020 when COVID hit, we took the opportunity uh, to renovate the boat. So the reason I'm telling you that is as of 2020, all brand new suites, refurbished totally. And you can see that big section cut that we put in there. Uh, this $250 million expansion allowed us to also increase the surface area to passenger ratio um, and enable us to put in a new infinity pool, uh, a new jacuzzi, and of course, as I mentioned, more deck area. So although the boats have got longer, they didn't get wider, so we can still go down those narrow passengers. Um, those who have sailed with us before do know that we used to have a casino on all our boats. We have uh, changed that. The sentiment has moved with what our clients want, and now we have uh, refurbished with um, spas on all of the vessels. Um, this slide here, I'd just like to pause here and just uh, what, what is amazing at this picture because it really summarised the whole Windstar experience. Uh, I met one of the captains down in Australia when I was doing a, a work trip down there and I said to him, what is it to you that Windstar stands for? As he said, Ward, I'll share you this picture. He said, I can get this boat into the places that the others just can't get into. Uh, he said, you can see our clients there on the kayak. We're up here in Alaska at one of the glaciers there. He said, the first thing you'll notice, Ward, is there's no ships between us and the glacier. That's always my plan. Anyway, on this particular day, he got the boat in. He was taking a rest down in our yacht club, our cafe area. And he saw two ladies sitting there and they were crying in an embrace. And he thought, oh, my gosh, what has happened? <laughs> I need to get over there. And he said, ladies, what's going on? Can, do I need to get the ship's doctor? And they said, no, 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 we're just crying in jubilation. We just never thought that we'd have this opportunity uh, to be out on the water close to a glacier and we know it's all your crew and your hard work that has got us here. Um, so this really epitomises and what I'm saying is from the guys that are cleaning the boat and the girls uh, and the people that are uh, watching the decks and working on the water sports platform right up to the captain, we're all entrenched in making sure that the experience is awesome. So to that, we want to make sure that our itinerary stand out from everyone else. So I do challenge people, if you're looking at destination, compare our itinerary. We can really get into those small places that others can't go. Also, with smallness comes flexibility. So our days are unregimented in a way that, you know, if weather's affecting our plans, we can shift it around and go and make sure that we don't just miss out on things. We can relocate and get to other places. 
The other important thing I find about luxury travel or the delivery of that service is anticipating needs. So for every three guests, we have two staff. Uh, what that means is they'll know your name on the first day, what you like to eat, what you like to drink. But at the same time, if you want them to just leave you alone and feedback, you know, that, as I said, anticipating the needs of the clients and the passengers is what a luxury experience is all about. Now, Entertainment on board must know that we don't have a zip line or a raceway. You know, even though our kids' age is eight and up, we really do cater for the discerning, well-travelled uh, clients. And here's a great picture here. This is our president. Uh, this was an Iceland cruise that I got to experience. And the guys there are the, our room attendants, and they do a synchronised swimming demonstration on stage. I'll just leave that as a teaser. But even my belly was aching for hours after this. It's it's quite an incredible experience. Um, and here's my wife and I with Hussein on the left, who was our room attendant from Indonesia. And he uh, jokingly at the end of the cruise came to us and said, Ward, I may never see you again. I've been picked up by the Olympic synchronised swimming team, which is not true, of course, but they have a wonderful sense of humour, very warm people. And um, there's our general manager and our purser also on the right. They're always walking around the ship, uh, making sure everyone's having a good time. Now, when it comes to sightseeing, we like to contract with small mum and pup uh, operators so that you can really get that local immersed experience. Um, when it comes to what's included, you know, we always include all our food and all our hotel on board, and of course, all the cruising, but we also have some Windscar discovery events. So on the left there uh, is the Iceland Blue Chapel experience, where we literally pull into this gorgeous little port, we wander up to the chapel, we have a... Um, I think I've got it here on the next slide. No, I don't. Uh, we go into the chapel and we are entertained um, by a comedian, a guitarist and a singer about those quirky cultures of the Icelandic people. And on the right there in Tahiti, uh, again, I mentioned we've been there 35 years. We actually own our own private motu just off uh, Raiatea. Uh, so we can go there and spend the whole day on the beach. We can do our kayaking, our swimming, even have a massage on the beach and have your lunch there. Um, this is also on every single one of our vessel is our water sports platform here at the back of the boat. And you can imagine being a seafaring experience, you want to enjoy the water. No better way than be able to just drop down the back of the boat and be kayaking or stand up pedal boarding, snorkeling or just lollygagging around on a uh, lily pad off the back of our boats there. Something unique you will find with Windstar as well is the open bridge policy. We know other cruise companies do allow you to go up onto the bridge at a, at a cost. Ours is totally free and open. Our crew and our captains love you to come up and talk all things nautical if that's something that you want to learn about. We have a big, big emphasis on food quality on board, so much so that when we're in port, we like to shop locally. So you can actually go shopping with the chef. Again, no cost to this. You just let the chef know you're interested in going ashore that day and you can walk around with him. So let's just have a look at our dining experience. Uh, it's important to mention the James Beard Foundation. We are the only uh, official cruise line of the James Beard Foundation, which is a group of chefs critiques um, and restaurateurs who are very much about farm to table freshness. So on some of our sailings, we will have wine pairings and celebrity chefs from the James Beard Foundation that come and join us. So just a quick wrap on the nuts and bolts of the dining options. The Amphora is our main dining room, holds 200 people. There's no set tables. There's no set dining tables. Uh, there's no reservations. You just come and go as you please. And there's no upcharges at all. Everything included, menu changes every day. Up on the top deck of the Star Class boats is the uh, Star Grill. So think brisket, turkey, chicken, uh, buffet style lunches up in an alfresco setting. And then our signature restaurant, the Quadro 44, uh, which is a Spanish tapas. You can see the open kitchen in the back there. Only holds 30 people. So you do need to make a reservation. Again, no upcharge on this, but we will monitor the reservations just to ensure that no one misses out on this great experience. Then, of course, our uh, iconic uh, uh, restaurant is the Veranda Cafe, which is where at breakfast time you will have your um a hot omelette station and all the continental breakfast that you need. But what we love to do with this is repurpose another great al fresco dining experience and we revert to uh, what we call candles. It's the same cafe, but at night time we turn it into candles and it's a signature steak and seafood opportunity for your clients. Um, here at the Yacht Club, 
Um, it is our uh, low uh, low key early rises area. There's a cafe with pastries. So those that are looking and late night snackers, <laughs> you can come down here. So there's plenty of options um, for the food. Of course, one of the favorite ones is never leave your room. You can do 24 hour in room dining as well. Let me talk about the rooms on board because in 2020, as I mentioned, the refurb means that we now have minimum rooms of 277 square feet. So if you do the math, that's quite a big room for an ocean going vessel. Um, this is the ocean view suite, which has a full panoramic window, as you can see a full sitting area curtain closes, then you have your bedroom and then a full walk-in wardrobe and a bathroom. Now you have a choice of layouts. You can have the bed at the window or away from the window. And then our third category up is the star balcony suite. Now that is a French or Juliet balcony. It's 40 inches from doorway to edge of the veranda. So you can open up and get the fresh air and stand out there. It doesn't have a table and chair. If you uh, insist on a full balcony, uh, and there's the bathrooms, by the way, full new bathrooms with two sinks. We get a lot of great feedback on that. Um, if you do want the full balconies, you do need to upgrade to three room types, either the Broadmoor suite, which we used to call our deluxe room, which are bigger bedrooms, bigger living areas, um, or our Sea Island suite, which was our classic uh, rooms. And these have a full balcony, as you can see in the back there. This is the third option for upgrade, which is Grand Owners Suite. It's uh, combined 1374 square feet. Again, those that know boats, uh, rooms on the water, that's a big one. Uh, and full balcony there. Now, when we say who's the typical Windstar, we love to carry everyone. It's a great experience. But what we find as a you know stereotype, if you like, is people who've done river cruises on smaller vessels love to come to us for ocean itineraries. Uh, sailing sophisticates, they're the people that have done every other cruise line in the world and are looking for the next thing. They come to us. And then, of course, we have active explorers who are very often first-time travellers or first-time cruisers, sorry, who have done a lot of independent travelling, Europe uh, self-drive, but then find, hey, I'm really looking for something to slow down so I don't have to unpack every night and I want to do active things while in port but I want to relax at sea so there's something there for everyone. Um, just trying to move on to my slide here, here we go. Yeah so let's just do a quick recap of our destinations. Um, as I mentioned uh, we're covering the world and it does rotate. So, you you know, keep in touch with us if you're looking for new destinations, because with a small fleet, we can't be everywhere at once, but we do want to cover everywhere. So, as I mentioned, 35 years down in beautiful French Polynesia, Tahiti, that's the island of Bora Bora. Um, in the Panama Canal, uh, the Costa Rica and the South America areas or north of South America, uh, this is a very popular cruise because a lot of our cruisers love to tick the big boxes like Panama and Suez Canal. Uh, you can tell by my funny accent, Australia and New Zealand are close to my heart. We were down there last year. We will be doing a December and January, so I think holiday sailing down in that area. Um, and the new big one starting in November, and we'll be there from November through till March for the next three years, is the Middle East. Uh, due to our customers, our discerning customers or repeat customers who uh, love new and exotic and curious about new destinations, they've asked us to take them to uh, Dubai, um, go around the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea. So there's some fantastic itineraries for that area. Asia continues to be popular as we relocate the boat out of Australia and New Zealand. It comes back through um, some beautiful Asia itineraries. Um, and then, of course, think of other cold destinations, our iconic places like Iceland and Norway. Um, and, of course, the Mediterranean and the Caribbean continue to be uh, mainstays for us. Um, my little button's just not clicking there. One second. Here we go. Do want to mention some nuts and bolts on pricing. The pricing that you will see uh, will always be our full cruise, your full hotel, and all your food uh, and 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 beverages and hotel room, of course. But if you're looking for alcohol packages, then there are options. Our all-in package at the top there, you can see, actually does include all your Wi-Fi as well. So Wi-Fi a la carte, just for information, is $35 per day if you don't buy it in a package. Um, and I've also put the a la carte packages of our prices there. So you can do the sums and work out, okay, what am I going to drink per day? There is an 18% gratuity. Does it make sense to buy a package? So that's all uh, up for discussion and for you to make a choice on. Um, Sorry, I'm just having a problem here. Oh, there we go. That is hitting the last one there. I will leave that as the formal part of the presentation, but I invite Paul back on. Um, and yes, 
thank you, Paul, for the opportunity to give you some info. I'm sure you have some questions, or if you don't, that's fine too. Oh, thanks, Ward. I think that's great. And one of the reasons that we are promoting Windstar Cruises is we really think that that small ship experience is superior to the, well, the, the bigger ship, the sort of monstrous type of cruise that people can go on. It's more intimate, it's more personal, you have more unique destinations and Windstar really fits that bill. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the segment, you know, that we're trying to push into. Um, and but and having said that, we do delight in actually welcoming passengers that have done the big ship cruises before and are looking for, you know, what, what is different and just trying it once. Because sometimes there's hesitation with going on a small ship, you know, around stability and rough seas and things. But I can again refer back to that 2020 refurb when the ships were enormously stabilised. Um, and But it more speaks to our itineraries because they're smaller and closer to shore. We're not spending time out in the big rough waters. We're not making big ocean crossings unless we're relocating, of course. Mm -hmm. But generally the, you know, seven to 10 day itineraries are staying close to the, the home and close to shore. So you don't experience a lot of those big seas, which is probably the number one um, what objection of, of choosing a small ship. Right. Um, my first question for you is, in addition to the different destinations where you go, um, is there or are there options to include get an airfare, get a kind of a, a travel package together, like book airfare and the cruise together, and also pre and post cruise uh, excursions? Can you talk about that a bit? Yeah, absolutely. So the answer is yes. The one destination, particularly as I keep mentioning, Tahiti, with 35 years of experience there, that is the one destination where we have a direct contract with the home carrier, Air Tahiti Nui. So I would definitely, you know, we we link into their air program. Um, we link into a pre and post hotel night there, just for seamless, you know, transfers in and out of the country. And then what we also offer in Tahiti is because everyone's heard about the overwater bungalows, right? <laughs> so you can have two options there. You can either substitute a night on board and we can ferry you over to one of the um, overwater experiences there at an extra charge, of course. Um, or what I would suggest, people like to do a three-day pre or post stay at the overwater bungalow. The only logistical difference is there, there's an extra flight or ferry involved because we do have to return the boat back to our home port in Papiate, and then you would need to fly back to Bora Bora. So that's why some people just take that one night in the middle just for a time uh, factor. For all our other destinations, and yeah, it's worth a peruse on our website, we offer what we call uh, pre and post cruise tours which are land-based tours of three to four days. So, for example, if you're going into the Middle East, but Egypt, you know, and you want to see the pyramids um, and Luxor and, all, and um, uh, Valley of the Kings, obviously they're not available <laughs> to our boat, but we do put those as what we call pre-cruise tours, which are fully escorted um, with a tour operator. Uh, so, you know, not to use that cliche, but you, you hand-holding um, or takes all the inconvenience out of uh, independent travel. So that's available. And yeah, we have an air program. We can offer you an airfare to all these ports that we fly in and out of. Um, I just do pause, Paul, because you're uh, you know, a, a travel uh, advisor owner. You may sometimes get a better deal than we can here. So I would suggest you can shop those, those airfares as well. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Um, what about um, the possibility of bringing groups on board the different ships? Um, how large of a group can the different ships accommodate and how does that work? Yeah, we generally say that our, our our standard group size is 10 people. We call the group, once there's 10 people, that's a group. Um, but they also range 10 to 40. And I find 40 tends to be our maximum group. And again, I think it's just for uh, logistic or village operation, as we call it. A group of 40 on a ship of 400 is quite a, quite a big percentage. Um, but every now and then, so what we might have is two groups of different entities uh, coming in two groups of 40. But to be honest, with the, the beauty of Windstar is that once you're on that ship, um, there's not a lot that has to be uh, looked after because you can just go down to reception. As I said, the general manager and the purser are always wandering around, um, you know, uh, uh, looking after you, asking, is everything okay? Um, so it uh, basically what I'm saying, the whole 300 becomes a group. <laughs> everyone right. starts to see everyone, enjoy the camaraderie. They'll be playing jigsaw puzzles in the library. They'll end up dining together. 
Yeah, it really is one of these unique experiences, Paul, of community that we never get across on a on a uh, presentation. And even myself coming into the company was was you know not sure of what all this you know um, you know friendly soft speaking of the community was about. But when you're on there, like I could tell you, we're still in touch with some of these people that we met on the ships, and the, even the staff and crew just. Yeah, and, you know, this is um, culturally, you know, in some of our, our workers, they just remember your name. I, you know, I, I met someone the other day that said, yeah, we went back on our, a different trip with Windstar. It was 10 years later. It was the same person, and they just walked straight up and remembered our name. I mean, they don't carry a database or anything, mate. It's just in their head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's – I'm glad you brought that up because one of the big things about the small, small ownership experiences – you're going to make friends and whether it's passengers or a crew and you may not even plan to do that, but it happens. Yeah, it, it absolutely does. And, yeah, and some people say, oh, you know, I had a, a one customer at a presentation used to say, oh, you know, I like the big ship because I'm anonymous, you know, on a 4,000 carrier. I'm like, yeah, but that's fine. We, if you don't want to talk to us here too, we can we can do that as well. There's plenty of places to hide. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um <laughs> That's that's really great, and uh, I'm really looking forward to promoting Windstar with you and uh, the whole company uh, as we go forward. And again, I really appreciate your taking some time out to share with us the Windstar experience, and uh, look forward to what we can do together uh, down the road. Absolutely, Paul. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Take care.